The man who's been looking at the papers. He's made the decisions. He's reviewed those magazines. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Bernard Walters. Hey! Was that me? Johnny. Sorry, 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 Richard. I was just thinking, because I still can't get over last night's show. I, I mean, roll I... the timpanies for you and you just sit there. Oh, I know, I've seen you roll, 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 pole. But, I mean, last night's show was... You know, I, I was at home listening to it. I was going through the pop press, you know, what there was at that time. And you, know? you were listening? Yeah. Oh, that's good. To I know. mean, you know, I thought, can we cap this tonight? I just thought the flying lizards, can I wait to hear that one again? Then Alison came on. Alpha's used to be. Yeah. She doesn't seem to be want to be Alf anymore, does she? You know, like, it's all these girls who, who are like, you know, everybody says, oh, good old Alf, one of the boys. Then you think they don't really want to be. She, answers, quite to, right. she answers to the name. No, stuff. I think she should be. We'll call her Alison from now on because mm -hmm. I think that's more sensible. Last time I saw her, I think on, when she was on round table with, her, with us the other week, and we, I think I called her Alf. Uh, but she's not Alf now, she's, she's Alison. But so you, you I, don't want to be Bernie either. Is that the Does problem? anybody call me Bernie? Yes, I do. Oh, you do? Oh, well, uh, well we'll, we'll see. Well, I, I'd rather like it. I think it, it establishes a kind of intimacy that we don't normally have in real life. <laughs> <laughs> OK. OK. <laughs> <laughs> right, do it, do fade it, it. Do it. Let me go on, yeah, let me right. go on. Okay. So anyway, but I thought it sounded rather good. I mean, I was sort of, I thought, oh, that's a good record she's picked, and there's another good one. And it sort of raised me, you know, and I thought these, th because I talked to her when she first came on Round Table, when she was um, still with Lado, Vince, and twiddle, twiddle, twiddle kind of thing. And she was talking about, and I, she talked about a lot of groups that I remember, like buying Muddy Waters and things like that, when presumably she was just about being born and so on. I thought, well, it still goes on. And I'll tell you what was a good record, and you pointed, and I think, hey, he's got this wrong. And I dashed upstairs. You know, you know, like my house, sort of eight flights. Good, 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 good. Up I go. Yeah, exactly. Went upstairs to look it up. Get Charlie Gillette's book now. Flip, 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 and going away. And that was about Ray Charles and that record that you said was from 1949. Yes, right. Which it, it probably was. It was. And I didn't think it could have been. Los Angeles. Yep, recordings, and, yeah. Recordings. Uh, yeah. You were a bit taken aback. Mm. I thought he's got this wrong. Oh boy, I'll ring into the studio and tell him. So I had a quick look. And so then I'm turning the page and thinking, what a pleasant woman, you know, Alison Moyer is, and there she is doing her thing. And I turn the page. Her name leaps out straight away. Record minute. It's amazing. Life plays some strange tricks. With a face like that, you'll know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I turn the faces. Turn, 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 as the birds used to say, or somebody, I don't know, Pete Seeger or somebody. Anyway, I go turn around, and so, suddenly this leaps out, and it says, What are the BBC thinking about? I thought, it's amazing, they've got the letter in, she's only just on the air. Why haven't they banned Alison Moyer, oh no, Alison Moyer's single, Love Resurrection? Is it because they consider her a well-established, innocent female singer? As far as I can see, she doesn't leave much to the imagination, does she? Hoo, 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 hoo. So somebody in recommend I thought, I can't quite see that. I mean, you know, talking about the old days when I used to buy those records and Alison was being born, the sort of thing that she goes for now. So often we were at school then we'd say, hey, listen to this record. Oh, George Malley just sort of, like, introduced this record on the radio and it would be all this kind of, Mama, there's another mule in your coffee grinder. And we'd say, oh, you know what that means? And so we'd say, no, what do you mean? <laughs> Well, I don't know what it means, but I'm sure it's really rude. And I thought, we're going a bit far, because Alison's record is really nice. I mean, if you listen on, you thought, that could be... I've no idea what it's all about. There it is, you know, and I thought, well, there it is, they're complaining in Record Mirror. There's nothing about it, I said, in Melody Maker. <laughs> Melody, Melody Maker! Maker! <laughs> I just told her, there it was, Melody Maker. And I thought, straight off, they stop like they're waking up. It's like seeing a sort of, whatever it's called, a open out, a butterfly comes out. You know, you, you've seen that, haven't you? You've seen it with David Attenborough, you've seen it with Richard Attenborough. <laughs> and then the butterfly comes out. And it's like, talk, 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 and they say, what happened? <laughs> they sort of, like, come round after several weeks, being on strike or whatever they've been in. They say, we just popped out for a packet of cheese and onion and a mug of bovril. When we got back, a place was swimming with dissidents, they say. And, oh, but anyway, they've come back. Why is it that NMA hasn't come back? Because I went out they're even... Back, they're back next week, aren't they? Lunchtime today, I was still saying, well, yeah. Melody Maker's there, enemies got a bit, but still, Melody Maker, there it is. Mm. But they say, not that we appear to have missed much, we kept looking at sounds and learned an awful lot about Ronnie James Dio. So did we. Dio, so... come on, for goodness gracious, come on, Dio. Ronnie James Dio, <laughs> whatever it is, I don't know, who's going to know these things? But anyway, Ronnie James, whatever he is, but I mean, we didn't learn what his name was, but on the other hand, we learned he was a short person who's very into, like, Tommy Vance's area. But I mean, that's all we knew. What more could we have? But I mean, the Melody Maker said they spotted the same sort of thing. Well, what is in the Melody Maker? We always look for the same things. Who's Wally of the Week? Neil! Our old chum, Neil! We were only round the pub with him the other day, weren't we? What round table? Neil, we go down, and they say, Neil! Ain't you just sick to death of him? The character is a one-joke wonder, and that joke had already worn alarmingly thin before his timely demise with the young ones. Now the old, hmm, is everywhere, and he's becoming grossly boring. Holy my, she was a rotten record when traffic did it, and Neil's lacklustre copycat interpretation is startlingly turgid. <laughs> says, talk, 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 here, Melody Maker. Neil must be extinguished. Yep, that's right. All the best backlashes started. Talk, talk, talk. You see that? I mean, 
when they went out, you know, and they were off, suddenly off the streets and things, walking up and down with packles, Neil hadn't got the record out. There's a good example. Now, I was Wally of the Week, as you remember, but I'd also been Chap of the Week. It took them some weeks to, to get me from being Chap of the Week to being Wally of the Week. I thought it took one week. No, 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 it's about <laughs> five. But in, in the case of Neil, he's not even established. He just pops up at the top of the charts. Because they've been off, off the, the air almost, you know, off the streets, as it were, they haven't had time to establish him. So already, that's Neil finished. Chaps of the Week turn out to be the Violent Femmes. <laughs> the Violent Femmes! I heard you play them last night. It's a good LP. Well, quite that's, right your, too. that's your sort of music, of course, and I can see by the cover of sounds here, they're your sort of boys. Oh, Ooh. yes, Ooh, aren't they? What a bunch of sweet. I mean, I'm sure they're all right. But I mean, they're <laughs> Melody Maker. You know, they've not only become chaps of the week, there's a big uh, article, a big interview with them, and they get a very good write up, so obviously. The entire basis, of course, of building them up so he can knock them down. Exactly. Up well, you wait till enemy comes back and they sort of. <laughs> Julie Birchall, they'll open that cage. <laughs> Release the tiger! Uh, comes the cry from the back. Violent Femmes. Hello, everybody! <laughs> She'll be in. I can't wait. Next week, we'll really give enemy some. <laughs> give him some coverage. But I mean, Melody Maker, okay. Violent Femmes, Chap of the Week. What's it all about? Star interviews. Tasty Tim. <laughs> Tasty Tim. <laughs> oh, no. Look at that face. It's like something out of. What? Is, is it me? It's like something out of Valentino, isn't it? Except it's not Valentino. It looks it? like Twiggy, actually, in The Boyfriend. Well, exactly. I knew Ken Russell came into it somewhere, but I mean, <laughs> Valentino. Yes, oh, it's nice to be working with a guy of culture, obviously. Well, but, I mean. Yeah, well, you'll do for the moment till he Over comes. Right. Tasty Tim. I mean, Tasty Tim. And it says <laughs> that your hair is platinum blonde, but you're wearing a wig. Yes says Tasty Tim. The image before this was no hair, except for a really long ponytail. It was a, an exaggerated Harry Krishna. No exaggerated Harry Krishna. Krishna. Doesn't that sound... I mean, a reverse Batten Foster was enough for us round the pub round the corner. <laughs> what? But an exaggerated Harry Krishna must be no drinks at all. <laughs> I mean, good lord. Even I don't buy them at an exaggerate. He says, and then Tasty Tim says, it hasn't really grown back yet. He emphasised the fun again. It's more fun to be a boy and dressed up. Because if I was a girl, I'd be called a tart. I can turn around and say, well, I'm a boy. What of it? He was off to perform that very evening at a meet the public exercise on behalf of the Metropolitan Police. What does this mean? Do they line him up and say, right, gentlemen, hold it, hold it, hold it. Now pick out the member of the public. <laughs> now, come on. What is this? There must be something more. Melody Maker, come on, that's where it was all about. Charlie Parker's death, everything was on the front page. What's on the front page when they come back? Those wham boys looking bronzed and before or after? Well, bronzed. <laughs> yes. It's before, yes. definitely. Well, bronzed before. and fit. One of them is looking to be bronzed and fat, but still not not too much. <laughs> now that's all right. I should talk about it. So anyway, I'm not in the charts. So. There they go, wham boys on the front. Would the melody maker be doing wham at one stage? I open it here. Yeah, I've got to open it. Quite Believe it or not, you're really opening melody maker. Yeah, it sounds like goes. you're cutting it up. But here it goes again. <laughs> and I tell you, they've let loose on 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 wham. Helen Fitzgerald, who at one stage I had marked as a possible substitute for Miss Ratsby, you know, the old Miss Waxby on, on, on NME, you know. She could be the new Julie Birchall, I thought. And she starts off, talk about a uh, backhanded compliment, she starts off, George Michael and Andrew Ridgely are sexist, fascist, stroppy, untalented, arrogant, mercenary, manipulative, elitist, despicably commercial and wholly egocentric. They're on the front page. <laughs> oh, boy. And then she goes on. Oh, so the papers say. Oh. <laughs> what a way round it, eh, do me. So, anyway, look, but uh, they knew this. The boys from Wham knew this. Because they're not, not bad guys. I mean, we've had them on the show, haven't we? They seemed all right to me. Were they all right to you? They live just round the corner from here, eh? From here? Local boys. Oh, do they? Oh, well, Fitzrovia Oh, patrons. well, well, yes, I, 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 I've seen them around the place. But anyway, George is, is talking to them. And they said, they like set it up for themselves. And they said, we didn't want to talk to Melody Maker because your hypocrisy makes us sick. George states flatly. You use our names on the cover to help you sell more issues and then slag us off inside. Well, that's actually perfectly true, obviously, it's happening here. And then you have the nerve to criticise our market strategies. One issue last year slagged us off four times, and yet you used a glossy picture of us for the free calendar inside. So, mm-hmm, 15 all, tit for tat here. But she finishes up, she says, George inevitably concludes this surprisingly educational joust with the challenge. Well, you've sat and talked to us now and you've heard wham from wham. We're not saying that we have no egos. Of course we're enjoying this success. That's been our target from the start. We're not covering anything up and we're probably a damn sight more honest in our intentions than some other bands. Excuse my French. That's me saying that. That's not yours. <laughs> <laughs> Having met us, can you still go away feeling that we're con artists who prey mercilessly on other people's vulnerability to pay our way to the top? Helen Fitzgerald has to say. 
And the answer, of course, is no. Mm-hmm-hmm. <laughs> so, there we are. Well, Melody Maker started off with a good name, but giving it some good exposure. Got a nice so picture of Sade on the other side of the page. Sade, yes, very nice picture of Sade, yes. Mm -hmm. Coming up shortly on Round Table, of course. Tracy Ullman, sunglasses. Now, that got... When you were on with, um, uh, Oh, when you were away, I should say, and Mew was on, Muriel, Tracy Ullman seemed to feature in the, in the reviews there, and she... I didn't go away, actually, on Round Table. <laughs> oh, tell him, you didn't notice, but I was oh, there no, every week. Wherever you were, when you're on this programme, somebody okay. was away anyway, right. because I looked up and it was a different person. Oh, I see. <laughs> Muriel. But when Muriel was here on the pop press thing, I should have said, uh, uh, Tracy Ullman's sunglasses came up. And got quite a lot of stick, but here it says what? It says, nostalgia is the easiest thing in the world to peddle. This is in Melody Maker. Tracy carries it off better than most. As well as possible, well, through the spectre wall of sound. But it's still aimed, basically at ageing radio producers without an original thought in their heads and people who feel disaffected by modern pop music. Which is really weird, cos I quite liked it in parts, you know. Oh, but, um, there we go. Oh. We're all getting a little bit older. I mean, status quo in Melody Maker equals finito. I mean, you know, Tracy Ullman's a newcomer, but status quo. Rock and roll's a young man's game, says Rossi. Touring gets harder to take when you get older. I do feel old now and again. I mean, my son makes me feel old. He's 17. But Parfit's still a bit keen. Parfit says... Parfit's the pop star, it says he describes himself as someone who's never grown up and freely admits to a taste for expensive living. My only regret about status quo is that our records didn't do better in the States, he says, taking a break from his roller skating. If the next album does well in America, I wouldn't mind getting the band back on the road to tour again. Rossi, of course, says status quo will never play live again. What's this I hear about the Alan Price set getting back together again? Oh, John? it's just a rumour that's a buzz of the clubs, good heavens <laughs> above. But even young guys, they can't cope. I mean, I, I, Alan Price said, listen... Let's face it, I could have been big today if I hadn't left that synth in acne. <laughs> I'm just saying that because that's a quote from Edwin here, old uh, Duda from uh, um, uh, Edwin Collins, you know, the old orange juice chap, and here he is. In Record Mirror, I've moved on to Record Mirror now, and he's talking about his, his pop scene, you know, when he, when he had a sort of a very short pop burst. And he said, I thought it'd be really exciting to be on top of the pops and pop quiz, but it disappointed me. Not a pot of gold financially or metaphorically. I left our synthesizer in our house in Hackney. Our landlord took it in lieu of rent arrears. That was the magical machine that had taken orange juice into the charts. I could have been an artist of the standing of Howard Jones or Nick Kershaw if I hadn't left that scene in Acne. Good recitation. We'll work that up for the Christmas party. <laughs> if I hadn't left that scene in Acne. Gary Crowley, as usual, record mirror. At least we find out what Gary's like, because he buzzes about like a flea in a bottle. You've known Gary for years, mm -hmm. banging off the walls, jumping around, bing, 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 bing. Suddenly he's a cult figure. Here he does his likes and dislikes. Enjoys wrestling with girls. <laughs> <laughs> Says Gary. <laughs> Hates. Getting up early. I find that when I'm wrestling with girls and they say, I'm over you, go in the back leg and ah, down and I'm on top of you. They say, OK, let's get up. And I say, no, let's, let's not get up early. <laughs> I just feel exactly the same. <laughs> Old has-beens, this is what Gary dislikes. Old has-beens waffling on and on and on. Quite right. I hate that and I'd fade them down <laughs> if they did it. Another thing he dislikes, take it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I knew you'd do that. Well done. Oh, yes. Finally, almost finally, actually. Um, <laughs> uh, of course, the, the phenomenon of our times, let's be quite honest, who really would have expected it? Frankie goes to Hollywood. I'd still like to point out that Two Tribes, top of the charts, their first appearance doing that was on the Peel Show 1982, you know. A lot of people don't realise well, that. Well, yeah, so almost. Actually well, almost. What do you mean, almost? Well, well apart from Rock On before that. Oh, do they? Yeah. Not playing two, two Tribes? Yeah, yeah, right, the demo, yeah. Oh, don't be so don't silly. And I did 82. Yeah, no. Ha ha ha! Talk cheap. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Record Mirror do it at their chart file on this and say, Frankie goes to, to Hollywood have made history and just cannot be ignored. He said, we're not going to concentrate on them, we'll do other people next week, but he said, let's hear it for the boys who completed a notable double last Tuesday when Two Tribes offici officially registered its one millionth sale in this country just four months after their first single relax, and they go on and say it's better than John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John and Boney M and all the people who'd done it before, and apparently relax has raised its grand total of one million four hundred and sixty four thousand six hundred and sixty five copies and will shortly have sold a million copies on seven inch alone that's quite amazing mm. is there a new seven inch coming up well i was listening to your show last night richard mm -hmm. don't forget and i suddenly thought hey get up <laughs> i feel like a sex machine so the missus <laughs> said just carry on listening to the radio will you i'll go and get your pills i said oh, sorry but it does say here in melody maker i cut this out and it says about this uh, uh, um, flying lizard sex machine thing, and it says it, it describes it as from tainted speakers with a humorous erratic bite, and then it says available in regular seven inch and as a twelve inch, the singles out not. Hang on, <laughs> <laughs> I'll read that again. <laughs> Melody makers come back. Oh, the printers be on strike. So. The singles out not. I'm sorry, Melody Maker, you come back straight away and get it wrong. The singles out now. Can I count it on? Go ahead. Go ahead. One, two, three, four. 
I think uh, John basically identifies with that. That's the Flying Lizards and Sex Machine. 23 minutes past eight. Mr Walters will be back with his wacky look at the week gone by. This coming Tuesday at nine o'clock.